can we cut can we kind of take it a few steps back for people that maybe this is their first touch point with you and like how did you get into activism and can you kind of talk about that a yeah, bit in your journey um activism yeah so the way I got into activism is I I had a fundraiser for the Malala Fund um shout out to Malala you stop sign um she was like I think my first example of seeing like a young person be an activist but at the time I didn't really know what an activist was I just felt very pulled to an issue and at the time I had read this article about um Boko Haram and, and this hashtag called Bring Back Our Girls. And it was a campaign to bring back over 200 Nigerian schoolgirls that were kidnapped by Boko Haram. And I held up, I, I felt really called by it. So I wrote a letter to my principal and I was like, hey girl, like, I think we should do something about this. Like, it was kind of wild. Like, and she was like, okay, because I was in school, I was the goody two shoes. Like, I was a very straight and narrow kid. And so whatever Melissa wanted to do, they were like, go ahead, because they knew I wasn't going to do nothing bad. Like, I was a, I was a stand-up kid, for real. So I hit on my principal, and I was like, yeah, I want to do something. And she was like, okay. So she let me she let me take off an entire day of class um, to fundraise, like to sit, out, to sit outside the cafeteria and talk to people directly about feminism and, and, and global, uh, global uh, femi- uh, women's rights. And it was really cool. And what was even cooler is my friend, one of my, one of my closest friends at the time, her name is Cappy. She helped me put up this wall um, and it, we put up like, it was like an equality wall. So it spelled out equality in post-it notes. And throughout the day, people could pick up a post-it note and write what equality meant to them. Um, and that was our way of engaging them uh, as, like throughout the day of the fundraiser. And I think I ended up raising like over $200, which seems small, but at the time, like that was crazy. Like that was, that was like, Live because because you gotta understand I went to a very apathetic school so to get people to actually give me money for this thing that was happening in Africa like they're like whoa like who's this girl and what is she talking about and then from there like I just I just kept on I just kept on like doing different things in my community and I think what was really special about the time too was this was the time that Twitter was really becoming more popular and social media activism was also becoming more popular. So people were on Twitter kind of just like writing entire theoretical frameworks. And so that's also how I came into my political education. I would just follow all these scholars and all these theorists on Twitter and then just read up on Blackness and the Black radical tradition and and Baldwin and and Toni Morris and all these people. And then by the time I was 18, I was kind of like, I got this. So (laughs) that's how I came into activism. I, I think I came through it by caring. And then I just found out I was good at it. And I just kept on going. Yeah, which is, which is a great way to so you found you came across an issue that spoke to you. And then you kind of built from there, it sounds like and and grew and and then found other things. And uh, so, you know, maybe you come into movement work. um, you, you, You said you said you said you you were working big money in politics. Yes. Yeah, so I, it's, it, I've had an interesting journey. It's kind of, kind of gone 360, I think, but I'll, I'll tell you if you're interested. So I, um, I'll tell the quick version. So I was living in, in DC and, mm-hmm. um, in a, a low income, predominantly black neighborhood that, uh, had a lot Which of, black, uh, I was in, I was on East street, Northeast DC mm-hmm. So, and it was one, the story goes, at least for people in the neighborhood that it had at times been one of the most violent blocks, uh, you know, in, in the country. So it was, it was sort of being gentrified, but it was very rough for the people there. And I was, I was there because I got a job in DC and that was where I could afford to live. So that's where, that's where I was living. Uh, But I ended up bonding deeply with the neighborhood and uh, meeting a lot of wonderful people. And so I would do things like grow a garden there and, um, you know, have events for the community. And, you know, and the more and more you dig into the the problems, of course, the more and more you're like, well, everything is like corruption. And, you know, and and obviously the whole the white supremacy piece of it. But you look at like, well, why can't you get funding? Why can't you get that? Why can't 
why can't people get the help that they need and deserve? And so then I came across the money and politics thing. And so it's like, you're doing all these things in the neighborhood, but what about the big picture and the big, like, what about getting these, let you know, the right legislation to help people? Because sure, I can feel like, yeah, you can grow a garden and I can have events and I can give kids clothes and things like that. But it just felt like it wasn't big enough. Yeah. And so then I found an organization that was uh, going to get fighting to get big money out of politics. And we thought, I thought, aha, you know, we can get the corruption out, right? Then maybe we can get all of these other things uh-huh. taken care of. We can get, yeah, we can get legislators that actually create laws that help people and legislate greed and, you know, all of the, that sort of thing. But, um, you know, but organizations have their, their challenges. So, um, you know, the, there were definitely some, some challenges there. And, and then I kind of eventually swung back to, um, you know, I think, um, these, these local hyper-local things and connecting with people in your neighborhood, I think that is really important. And there is so much value to that. I'm in Los Angeles now. And so now I'm like going to city council meetings and, you know, so now I've gone. And that's usually the best place to be at is the city council meetings, the board meetings. That's where the, that's where the, those are the rooms where it happens. Yeah. So, yeah. So now we've kind of gone, but it, it's funny because I went from like you know, being super local, doing neighborhood stuff, yeah. trying to do the the bigger stuff and then going, you know, maybe we need to do the local. Yeah. And, yeah. But yeah, um, cause I feel like when you are an activist, you, you start off so pure. Like you start off, like some people even call it naivete. Like you start off just like, realizing something's wrong then you start asking more questions and like you really start to deeply care about this issue like it, it sometimes it, it can even consume your everyday life like you can't look mm-hmm. at something anymore without seeing the issue but then like you start organizing around it and then everybody starts focusing on numbers like okay well how many people showed up how many people signed yeah. up how many people um went from thinking this way and then thought this way but the thing about i think activism is a lot of it is like you can't quantify it. Like I can't quantify how I made that person feel or the seed that I planted that might grow like a decade later. But it, it's great that I was even able to connect with this person. But I think for me, I started getting very wrapped up in like, well, how many people showed up and how, what impact mm-hmm. is this really having? And I also started to focus on this, this the big thing but now it's like I'm back in the local level where I'm like, okay, like, hey, let's smash a car. <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, it's it it does feel very 360, but I almost feel like a lot of activists kind of go through that kind of like a life path journey. But yeah, I, I think there's there is value in all of it, right? And yeah, to your point, when you think about the numbers, you're spot on because you're thinking, okay, how many volunteers did I, you know, I got to make sure that all the volunteers are engaged and they've got something to do. And then, of course, when you have an organization, you need funding to keep the organization running and to do the mission. And so you do get very bogged down with those things. And then you then you start to think, well, what am I really doing here, right? If I'm spending so much time in the weeds of just getting participation, getting numbers, getting funds, you know, then where's the the moving of the movement? So yeah. I, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. And sometimes, sometimes being there and doing something locally, or just connecting, or um, yeah, or smashing something that that needs to, <laughs> needs to be smashed in that moment can be uh, there's value. Mm-hmm. in that too and in that whole journey yeah i agree so yeah usually people don't ask when when i'm chatting and interviewing people don't ask me oh um, <laughs> i know i got you out guy i was like <laughs> oh you're asking me a question yep through a little curveball last year so, you did yeah i'm so used to uh because i'm also a journalist trait so I'm like so used to I've got my question sheet and yeah. I'm like doing my thing and um but but that was nice it was nice that uh to kind of connect in in that moment uh, yeah.